Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, we're gonna talk about role-playing dimensions in Power BI. Stay tuned. Okay, role-playing dimensions. What are role-playing dimensions? Well, if you use multi-dimensional models, you automatically, you just know what they are because they were just everywhere. Um, so a quick definition is, it's a dimension that's used for multiple things. Think of like, if you have a fact table with multiple dates on it, like a ship date and an order date and a sale date, sales date, that dimension will be repurposed to analyze data across all those dates. Makes sense? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I've get, been getting a lot of questions. I actually got a phone call about, hey, how do we handle role playing dimensions in Power BI? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what sparked this video. It was over on my my video list, but it just keep getting kept getting lower and lower in the queue. But after I got the emails and actually the phone call, I said, why not do a video? Okay, so enough talking. You guys know how I like to do, right? Instead of all this talking, head over to my laptop. Okay, so let me kind of level set just a little bit. So t check out this model here that I have. So I have fact table, internet sales, and a couple of other <clears throat> dimensions, and I have my date dimension. And on my date dimension, I, I mean on my my fact table, I have two dates, right? An order date and a ship date. And if you look really closely at this, I only have one relationship right now. My order date is connected to the date on my date table. And so now if I do any type of analysis of data in my fact data, data my fact table, like sales amount, it will all be based on my order date. How would I do analysis based on my ship date? How would I handle that? Well, if you go from the pure definition of what a role playing dimension is, repurpose the date table, then that means we create another date table. Let's do it and let's see how that works out. Back to my laptop, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a new table, really simple, um, new table. We're gonna call this ship date and we're gonna just equal it to my order date. And that'll basically give me another copy of that table. Let's just for demo purposes, change the name of this to ship year and turn off all of my summarizations. And what I'd like to do is sort my month name by month number and go ahead and hide month number. I don't need it. Now, I wanna analyze my sales amount by my new date. What do I need to do? Well, so all this is based on my order date. Everything here is based on order date. So what I'd have to do is add another slicer for my from my ship year. So let's go ahead and do that. And add another table for my month, all right? And so now, wait a minute, I forgot to add my relationship. So once you add that new table, you must relate it to your fact table, right? Real world, real world, there we go. So now I have my relationship. So now I have two date tables connected to my one fact table. And now look at that, perfect. So if I choose this slicer, right? Uh-oh, wait a minute, it changes that one. And if I choose this slicer, right? Is it really changing? Yeah, it's affecting them both. Oh no, right? Mm, I could sync them up. I could use sync slicers to make it work across both, but that's not what I really want to have, what I really want to do, right? I have two years, I have two months, way too much to manage. Probably not the most efficient. You guys know how I am. I'm not lazy. I'm just really efficient. Probably not the best thing to do. And it can get quite confusing if you publish this out for end users to use, right? This could be just kind of chaotic and I go, I don't want to use this model. This is not a good thing, right? What makes it even worse is what if I wanted to analyze both of these amounts on the exact same chart? How would I do that? Because they're based on different years, they're based on the exact same sales amount. And that's why slicers, that's why the slicer is um, affecting both of the totals is because the total is based on the exact same sales amount. And so that's why when I choose one slicer here, it affects both, right? And if I choose one slicer here, it affects both, okay? Um, if I choose two different values from the slicer, it's gonna just completely break everything, okay? Kind of confusing, doesn't work the best. You really need to label them. You really need to train your end users on how to handle this, right? And multi-dimensional models is just a little more intuitive. So what's the best way to solve this, Patrick? 
let me show you. So let's do this, right? So we just start from scratch. All right, so now we've cleaned up. You got your model in a really good state. And what we're gonna do is change this, instead of this being sales amount, we're gonna call this order sales amount, all right? And we're gonna create a new sales amount right here. So we're gonna go new measure, and we can call this shipped sales amount equals calculate, right? Sum sales, oh, not substitute, sum sales amount. There we go. And we're gonna use a function called use relationship. So funny, I had this video recorded and I said user relationship. No, 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 it's use relationship. And now I get to specify the relationship that I wanna use. So we're gonna do date and then we're gonna do internet sales, ship date. So basically I'm telling Power BI with that use relationship function, use this relationship when you generate the measure, when you do the calculation for me, right? Click enter. Uh oh, got an error, right? And that error means it's, it's really a really good error is saying, hey, you must have a relationship, okay? So I'm gonna head back over here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my existing date table and establish a relationship between date and ship date. Notice that the relationship is inactive and that's okay because the use relationship function can actually use inactive relationships. And you may be thinking, hey Patrick, why don't I use the other function, right? The cross filter function. Um, and that's because uh, cross filter actually requires an active relationship. Let me show you, let me show you. So instead, if I would use this, right? Change this to cross filter. And it gives me an option here to specify the direction of my filter. So cross filter allows me to override um, the direction of my relationship, but it does re require an active um, relationship where use relationship, I can get rid of this and go back to my use relationship. It doesn't let you override the direction of your relationship, but it can leverage an inactive relationship to perform the calculation for me. So now I do that. I have a single date table, right? Now I go bring in month name. You can see there's my month name and I can add ship sales amount. You can see how it's analyzing that. And then I can add the order sales amount. And you can see they're two totally different values um, because they're based on two different dates in my fact table. But now if I start clicking, I have one year and everything just works. What? This is great, a great way to solve the role playing puzzle, the role playing dimension puzzle. I'm sure you guys have found lots of other ways to solve this problem. I'm curious, right? Tell me, post it in the comments below. If you haven't, take a look at this one. Let me know what you think. Comments, criticism, suggestions, post them in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting a guy in the cube channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. You like my video? Give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.